Hey guys, my name's Aaron from Geek Lemmy Development and welcome to our TV OS Crash Course. Now in the previous part of this crash course we set up our mini image gallery and to control it we used UI buttons. Now in this fourth part of this crash course we're going to be taking a look at how we can turn those buttons and create simple custom buttons with our very own image files. So first we're going to take a look at creating the image files, importing them and adding them to our buttons. We're then going to take a look at a brand new native feature only to tvOS applications and that's a focused view which allows you to select objects and turn them into focused objects on the screen. So let's jump straight into part 4 of the crash course. So continuing on from our previous part in our crash course, we're now going to talk about creating custom images and creating a custom focused button view on those custom images within our buttons. So before we get on to creating the image that we're going to need to be basically display within the button, uh, the problem with tvOS applications is when you add a custom image to the button, it kind of disables the effect that it's been given. As you can see, when I select the different buttons here, it kind of creates that pop out effect. It makes the button pop out, gives it that little bit of drop shadow, and that's called the focus view, which is native to tvOS applications. So when we add the image to it, like I said before, it disables it. It just becomes a flat image and we don't know that we're currently being displayed on it. So before we get into all that, we're first going to create our image that we want to basically use to display in the button. So within Photoshop here, we're going to set up a blank new canvas. I'm going to make it 400 by 200. It's not going to be a very big image. It's going to be a reasonable size to display in these buttons. So what I'm going to do then is go into Google and I'm going to simply search carbon fiber. There we go. And go to Google Images and just get a simple carbon fiber image uh, that we're going to basically be using as the texture for this button. So I'm going to copy that image and paste it in. And you can see that's the kind of effect that it's going to give us. So when I select the image, it's quite big. So I'm going to drag it to the whole size there so you can clearly see. And now it doesn't look as good. So let's put it back to its original size there. I would like that nice bit of effect there. So let's crop that layer. Let's take that, paste it in there, and delete our first layer, and then zoom back in. So if this is the first time you're using Photoshop, uh, it's just a whole new program on its own. Um, so I would suggest getting a little bit of practice before you start creating images within it. But if you're quite um, used, used but if you're quite used to using Photoshop and you know how to use it, then um, creating images will be quite simple. So we're going to create something very basic. So this image is now within my template. The first thing I'm going to do is add some effects to this layer. So the first thing I'm going to add is a gradient overlay. I'm going to pick the black to white one here and just fade out the transparency. There we go. So it creates a gradient effect. I'll add another one in, and this time I'm going to make sure it's a bevel and emboss um, kind of feature here. And we're going to up the size of it. And you can see it in the well, kind of creates that bump around the edge. I'm going to decrease the opacity of the white side of it and then kind of soften it up for the darker side there. And just decrease that a little bit more. And it creates this kind of nice bumped effect on our button, which is going to look really, really good. And then what I'm going to do now is kind of create a little icon, more of like a, a next and back icon, just so we're not using text within the image. So I'm going to bring a text file now and then drag a little text box over. And we'll do the more than and less than symbol. Now I'll just quickly change it to its white. And then we'll change up the font just so we get like a nice rounded effect. I think that one looks good there. Let's increase that size. Alternatively, we can make the text box a lot smaller. And then increase that by its size there. And just get that centered within the view. 
So I think that would look quite like a nice addition to the button itself. So what I'm gonna do then is save this, and this is gonna be our next button. So I'll call it our next button.png there, save that. And then I'm just gonna change the text within it to the opposite um, icon of the less than symbol there. And then save that. Again with the same name, just making sure I change this to our back. So I've got two images now that are gonna represent really nicely our next and back button. So within our project now, we're gonna to go to our assets folder and I'm gonna drag and drop these two new images into the assets there. And you see that added in. I'm not too worried about them not being kind of the correct size or the right size or anything or kind of having like retina versions because we don't need to worry about that. If you do want to make the exact size button or images for your buttons, I simply select your button, go to the size inspector, and you'll get your sizes there. Now, when we add these in, if I select both of these now, we're going to attribute inspector. There's two places we can put them in. Now, if you place in the images as the background of the button, then it also allows you to place text over the top. But what we don't want is the text over the top at all. We want to have these images placed in within the image section. So we're gonna press delete and enter to remove the text that when we place it in now. So we're gonna set the text section at the top here, delete and enter so there's no text in for when we place in our images. So let's start with our next button here. So in the image, we're gonna place in our next button. So don't worry about it, it's getting too big. That's not a problem at the moment. Then our back button, placing our back button there. So the main thing you're gonna see is that when I drag it around, it doesn't really touch the edges of the boundaries. Now that's because we have the ability to add in text, which normally uses the image as an icon to the side. So what we're gonna do is select both the buttons and here, where we got our content and our insets, very much like how we use these to move the cells around in our collection view, we're gonna set them all to zero. So as I do this, it's configuring our button now and moving it about, and it should all equal the sides. Now again, because this image is 400 by 200, the current size of this button is higher than that. So it only stretches to its maximum size. If I decrease it, you can see it now touches all the borders. So let's get this all set up then to a perfect size for our button now. So let's set this up then. Let's make it let's make it 200 by 100. And we'll do the same for this one. So 200 by 100. And we got that all in there. There we go. And we'll space out our label a bit more as well. So that's the edge there for our image view. There we go, place our label in the middle. And what I do as well is I'll change the height of all these labels, which are currently at 60. Let's go for 55, uh, maybe 50, bring it down a bit there. So I can then bump them all up underneath each other. And we can fit them all in a lot better with all the buttons placed in as well. There we go, and what I'll do, I'll resize this. Just so everything is placed in all proportion there. Okay, then we got it all in. The buttons are now all set up. So when I go to build and run, you can then see how the buttons work. And you need to remember, because the buttons are now custom buttons, it loses that bounce out effect like how we've got right here. So you see, when you can't really see that I'm selected on a button until I press it. So how can we now indicate to our user that we're selected on a particular button? How can I add this custom focused view on these buttons? And it's a little bit more difficult to how we did it for the image views in the cells, as those were just a simple tick option in the attributes inspector in the interface. Unfortunately, we have to do it a little bit different. Uh, we have to kind of create a class and code it to do this. So then, what we're gonna do is jump into our project here and we're gonna add in a new class. So we've got a new file 
and Cocoa Touch class here. And we make sure it's a subclass of this time a UI button. There we go. And I'm simply going to call this class our button focused view and add that in. There we go. So what this class does is we kind of create it to uh, basically we link those two buttons to this class. And this means is when we are focused on the button, it's going to increase the size of the button. And when we're not focused on it, it's going to decrease it in a nice animated effect to give us like what we do get in our collection view. So I'll delete what we got in there for now, so it's all blank, so you can see what we're typing out. And we're still going to start with an override function to can become focused. And we're going to return this to true. So whatever button's got this class linked in it, it can become focused. We can focus on the view. We're then going to create an additional override statement now for did update the focus in context. So what happens when the object becomes focused. So we type out did update focus in context. So what happens when it becomes focused and what we want it to do is increase in size. So if uh, the context dot next focus view, so if the context which is the button in question, uh, the next focus view equals 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 self then we get it to perform. And what we're going to get to perform is to get our UI view dot animate with duration. And then the first highlighted section here is how long the animation effect is going to last. Now we want this to get done pretty quick. And what it's doing is increasing the size of our button only by a small amount. So we want this to happen in 0.1 seconds as quick as possible to give us that effect. Now the animations here, we do a curly bracket here, and then we do space, our two brackets for our void, for our dash, more than symbol, capital on the void, in, and then we press enter, we get our context dot next focused view, question mark, dot transform to equal our CG Affine Transform Make Scale, which is just there. And then these next two highlight sections is how big we want it to go. So we start with the X axis, which 1.0 is its current size state. So if we go 1.10, again, we could play around with this to see how big and small we're going to go, 1.10 there, make it the same size. So we're only increasing the size by 10%, basically. So we press enter, do a bracket to close it up with our curly bracket also there. So that's simply all it's doing. It's increasing the size of the object in the context by 10%. That's all we want it to simply do. But what happens when we come off that selected object? So say we're on the button, but then we come off it it's still going to be 10% of its size increased. We need to descale it. We need to bring it back down to how it was. So what we're going to do now is copy this section here, the two um, curly brackets there, copy that, paste it in, and this time from next focused to previously focused view. And the only things we're going to simply change now is from the next to the previously focused view, and change the size down to 1.0 to back down to its original size. So change that there. So that's all it's doing in the views. If it focuses, it increases by 10%, which we got it to 1.10. Uh, and then if we come off it, which is the previously focused view, what it does when we leave that focused button or the button itself, it brings it back down to its normal size. So within the main dot storyboard, what we need to do now is select both of these buttons, go into our identity inspector and select the class and then add the name of the class, which is button focused view. So within the simulator, as you can see, you can't really tell unless I click on a button that I'm selected on it. If I go to build and run now, you'll then see the difference in how it interacts with our button. 
So I go to select on the button, next, and you can now see that it's increasing the size. Now it's entirely up to you if you wanna make it bigger or smaller, but I think that's a perfect size there. We actually, I may increase it a little bit more because the buttons are quite small anyway. Let's go up to 20% of its original size. Let me see how that changes things. There we go, that's perfect. So you can now see as I go through the gallery on my custom button that is now changing as I enter and come off it. So it goes up 20% of its original size and when I come off it, it goes back down to its original size. So there we go then, we can now add our custom focused view on our custom buttons. Now this doesn't always just work with buttons, you can change it and how it reacts with different objects that you are able to focus on. But it kind of just changes then up our whole application. So there we have it. We've now added custom images to our buttons and used the focus view to single them out when we're selected on them. So you can kind of now see the customized options we can have within our objects. And if you'd like to take your tvOS development to the next stage, make sure you check out our full featured course. Links to that will be down below. But in part five, we're going to be continuing on with the customized options within our application and taking a look at how we can manipulate the object layers themselves, add rounded edges, borders, and even how we can use external custom fonts within our application to change how the text looks. So until then, I'll see you all soon.